Uh, good morning. Uh, in the last session, I have started covering you know the surface and internal quality in continuously cast product. Uh, yeah, I have mentioned the what are the imperfections in cast product, what are the possible imperfections, what are the types of imperfections in cast product. I mentioned about this blow hole, pin hole, then crack, depression, oscillation marks and segregation, how are they influenced by casting process or the specific steel grade or the casting type of alignment, these are the possible factors. I have started the different issues one by one, yeah I had mentioned about how these blow holes and pin holes are generated, I mentioned that the whole idea is to control the content of soluble oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen. If you can control this, then you know the partial pressures of hydrogen, nitrogen and CO will be less during solidification and you know there will be less amount of gas bubbles formation because the total pressure which is the summation of partial pressure of hydrogen, nitrogen and carbon monoxide will be less than the atmospheric pressure or the ferrostatic pressure. So, there will be no gas bubbles which can generate which will form in the cast product. So, this is the basic principle for avoiding you know blow holes and pin holes in the cast product. Then I have mentioned that the when the solidification is starting in the mold, there we call it primary cooling in mold. So, how it happens? Liquid steel they gets drawn into gap between mold and solid shell. So, this part of slag freezes in contact with cold surface of copper mold. So, this I am trying to show with a with an image like what is happening in mold. This is the mold surface you know copper is a water cooled mold surface and we have the sub entry nozzle here. So, the liquid steel is getting discharged from the port of the sub entry nozzle and getting inside the uh, mold. Now, if you look at the inside the mold what is there? This is the liquid steel, this is the liquid pool of this whatever powder you are adding at the top of the liquid steel in the mold that powder is going to get melted in contact with the hot liquid steel. So, there are basically three layers, one is the loose powder at the top, then the sintered layer and finally, the liquid pool of slag which is just at the you know top of the liquid steel. So, basically in the mold we have a loose powder, we have a sintered layer, we have a liquid pool on top of the liquid steel. So, what is happening is important. The horizontal heat transfer is taking place this direction because it is a water cooled mold. This is the you know liquid steel which are having some lot of uh, high temperature. So, heat from here will try to come out through the you know water cooled mold. So, this is a horizontal heat transfer. I have also told the some amount of heat will also like to come out you know from the liquid steel to outside in the vertical fashion through the you know powder. So, the, the amount of heat of course, is less compared to this because you know there is a big insulator, loose powder is a big insulator, it does not allow too much of heat to come out. So, this surface also has to be maintained hot, so otherwise there will be some heat loss. So, if the surface is maintained hot then you this heat transfer is relatively less. And you know, here you have this is a horizontal heat transfer, some small amount of heat transfer vertically. So, some amount of radial heat transfer also will be there. So, what happens is that one rim is formed is called the yeah, solid rim which is forming from the pool of pool of liquid pool of slag. So, this molten slag after you know it gets frozen this is a rim and then what is happening please look at here this is a liquid yeah, slag, then this is the rim and then this dark area is basically the solid you know slag. So, from the liquid slag which is in contact with the mold copper mold some amount of solid slag has formed. 
this will be clear more clear rather in this picture here this is the mold area this is the flow in the mold people have found out through some modeling what is the flow what is the type of flow you know the liquid still is coming inside this is the temperature distribution is very, very hot here and then slowly the temperature is coming down inside the mold so this area that means the meniscus area has been sh magnified and shown in this picture so you please look at here the molten steel is this yellow we have the shell solid shell which is forming in you know in contact with the molten steel the part of it is getting solidified to so this is the solid shell and then we have the liquid slag in contact with the molten steel then we have a solid slag and solid rim and finally the mold so the gap between the mold and the molten steel as i was telling you the solid slag will first the liquid slag will be dragged in and in contact with the mold this will get solidified so we have a layer of solid slag and then liquid slag and then the solid shell and of course the molten steel now this particular area if it is magnified look at the you know what sizes what are the sizes this 5 mm is this much that means from the liquid shell thickness here is hardly when it is starting to solidify in the mold at the top of the mold is hardly less than 1 mm it is increasing as you are going down the mold maybe here it is 2 mm or 3 mm as you are going down the shell thickness will increase but at the top of the mold it is hardly 1 or 2 mm so this area is again if it is magnified you see what is the what are the different phases which are present was the solid slick solid slack film this is the liquid slack film and this is the shell solid shell which is getting solidified so this liquid slack will generate because of the movement of the you know oscillation the vertical and vertical movement top and bottom top and bottom this movement of the mold this will generate oscillation marks at this shell so these are the oscillation marks which will be forming at the meniscus i have shown what is there is a molten steel on top of that liquid slag on top of that solid slag so this is that area meniscus area which has been magnified and this particular area has been magnified here so as i was telling that the primary cooling on the mold the liquid slag is getting drawn into the gap between mold and solid shell because of the mold oscillation then part of the slag freezes in contact with cold surface of copper mold as i had shown you in those figures and this relative thickness of the solid vis-a-vis liquid slag layer in the gap this is very important part of it is solid part of it is liquid what is the relative thickness that determines what is the heat transfer how is it controlled controlled by two factors of the powder of the mold or the mold powder or the mold slag first is the basicity what is the ratio of calcium oxide sio2 and the solidification temperature of slag they play important role so if you have high solidification temperature then what happens as the liquid slag is getting solidified that means high solidification temperature means it will get solidified at relatively higher temperature so at a particular temperature lower than that the higher the temperature thicker will be the solid shell solid layer of the mold slag so this is important high solidification temperature increases solid layer and high basicity of the slag this facilitates crystallization that means from the slag which is slaggy in nature from slag it will go to the crystalline phase if you have a high basicity so both of these will lead to lower heat flux this is important so the during primary cooling how the heat flux in the gap between the shell and the mold how it is dictated dictated by two factors of mold slag one is the basicity and is the solidification temperature 
So, these two factors will determine what are the relative thicknesses of solid slag layer and liquid slag layer. Now, if you have a air gap formation in case of shrinkage, then air is an insulation causing insulation that means an insulator. So, this will have lower the heat transfer will be affected. So, this is again very important to understand how the cooling is taking place in the mold, what are the causes of heat transfer, the horizontal heat transfer which I was showing here, how this horizontal heat transfer is dictated by the two layer thickness, one is the solid layer and the liquid layer. The relative thicknesses of this solid and liquid layer will determine the horizontal heat transfer and this will determine how the shell will grow this is very important to understand. Uh, you remember that I had talked earlier that mold oscillation plays an important role as far as the quality of the cast product is concerned. Uh, I had mentioned that it in continuous casting mold is not stationary, it is oscillating that means it is coming down and coming up in a particular fashion. It may be sinusoidal which is very common or it may be even otherwise also. So, today I will be talking about what is the role of mold oscillation. I will be basically harping on how does it control the depth of the oscillation marks. I have told you that mold oscillation creates oscillation marks on the surface of the cast product whether it is billet or bloom or slab there will be some oscillation marks. But the issue is normal oscillation marks if it is not very deep if it is shallow it is not considered as a defect. But if the depth is more that means if the oscillation marks are quite deep then they constitute defect they are taken as a defect because you know it, it creates very uneven surface. So, it might create subsequently problem during reating of the cast product or hot rolling of the slab or bloom or billet, it might generate surface defects. <coughs> so, role of mold oscillation plays an important role in this regard. So, I thought let me discuss a bit on this aspect, so that you all of you understand what this mold oscillation will lead to, what will it result in, what is its effect on the surface quality. I had mentioned earlier that in mold, in continuous casting mold, there is a sub entry nozzle from which liquid steel is coming out and then there is a flow inside the mold. On top of the uh, liquid steel, there is a slag mold slag because whatever continuous casting powder you are adding it will melt. So, in contact with the liquid steel just above it there is a molten pool of slag is called mold slag. On top of it there is a semi solid layer and finally, on top of that you have a powder casting powder whatever you are adding in the mold which finally melts and creates the slag pool which is known as mold slag. So, this is shown in this diagram. So, let me concentrate on this, this particular you know this is the mold ok, this whole thing is the mold. So, this particular space inside the mold it has been magnified just to indicate what are the different constituents present in the mold when continuous casting is underway. So, first this one is molten steel I have told you which is coming from the sub entry nozzle coming inside the mold. So, there is a circulation because of the flow, but what I am trying to harp on is there is a molten steel this yellow phase. Then on top of it there is a slag this white one liquid slag because it is molten. So, there will be a 
melting of the whatever solid slag you are adding. So, it is molten and on top of it there is a solid slag, slag which has molten but got solidified also. Why? Because the mold is cold, relatively cooler because it is being cooled with water. So, in contact with the mold you have a solid slag, you have a solid slag rim, then you have liquid slag. Then in between the liquid slag and molten steel here you know let us look at here this black area is basically what? It is a solidified shell, molten steel whatever you are seeing here is the yellow colored material. Naturally since heat is being extracted horizontally by the mold which is getting cooled by water. So, the copper mold which is being cooled with water will extract heat from the molten steel. In the process in contact with the mold you first have a solid slag, then you have a liquid slag and then you have solid shell and finally molten steel as you are going away from the mold surface. This portion again has been magnified just to indicate that first in contact with the mold you have a which is blue colored you have a solid slag which is called a solid slag rim. Then you have molten slag this white area, then you have the solid shell and of course here you have the molten steel, but now we are magnifying this particular area that means the solid shell, the molten slag and the solid film of slag. So, heat is being extracted in this direction towards the mold. So, first you have the solid slag, then you have the liquid slag and then you have the solid shell of steel. Now, on the surface it is indicated the surface is not smooth because the mold is oscillating you know you have oscillation mark. So, oscillation mark is a result of mold oscillation there is no doubt about it. Now, I have mentioned that if these marks are shallow then it is ok, they are not harmful, they are not considered as a defect. But if these oscillation marks are quite deep then they will constitute a defect on the solid cast material. So, we have to be now looking we have to be rather careful about how the oscillation marks become deep, we should not allow them to become deep. So, what are the factors? which will control the depth of the oscillation marks that is what today I will going to discuss with all of you. So, you have understood that inside the mold liquid steel is coming from sub entry nozzle, it is hot, it has a super heat that means the temperature of the liquid steel is above the liquidus temperature. So, there is a heat content in the molten uh, steel which has to be taken care of. How does it, how is it taken care of in mold? By mold cooling. So, the heat transfer in the mold is primarily mostly in the horizontal direction because heat is getting extracted. Of course, there will be some, I have mentioned earlier that there will be some heat loss in the vertical or in the radial direction, but mostly heat is being extracted in the horizontal direction because the mold is cool, be getting cooled, it is a cold mold and it is a copper mold, copper is a good conductor of heat. So, heat is primarily getting extracted in the horizontal direction from the liquid steel away from it towards the mold. So, I have shown here what are the constituents which are present, molten steel, yellow, then this black one is a solid shell. After that you have a slag layer, molten slag layer, then you have this blue slag film which is adjacent to the mold surface. So, adjacent to the mold surface you have solid slag film, why solid? Because whatever liquid was slag was there it is getting cooled by the cold mold 
which is getting cooled by water. So, naturally there has to be a solid layer, then there is a liquid layer, then you have a solid shell of steel and finally, you have a molten steel. So, this is what is the different phases are present, different constituents are present as you are moving from the mold surface towards the inside the mold which is having molten steel inside. Now, let us see how the mold oscillation takes place. I have told repeatedly that mold is not stationary, this oscillation of the mold is mandatory or it is a must, it is essential for continuous casting. Otherwise, the problem may be there may be sticking of the solid shell with mold, there is a possibility. So, the liquid slag that means, whatever casting powder you are using that is getting melted in contact with uh, molten steel and this is being dragged inside the gap between the solid shell and the mold and finally, again a part of it is getting solidified. So, this mold oscillation helps in dragging the liquid slag in between the gap between the shell solid shell which is getting solidified and the mold. So, this is a must. So, this helps in good lubrication number one, it helps in moderate heat transfer. So, the heat transfer should not be very fast, it should be moderate. If it is very fast, then there is a possibility of shell getting in touch with the mold getting stuck with the mold and there may be breakout. So, mold oscillation along with the liquid slag helps in good lubrication and moderate heat transfer that I have discussed earlier. Now, let us see how this mold oscillation is taking place, this is very important to understand. First, let us look at the yellow, yeah, oscillate, yeah, yellow, yeah, this movement this is the mold displacement M D. So, how is it moving? It is moving sinusoidally because that is quite normal and quite you know popular for mold oscillation. There I have told you there may be other type of oscillation as well, but let us assume that it is moving sinusoidally and which is a very common and popular mode of oscillation. It is sinusoidally moving means it is going up and down in a sinusoidal fashion. So, the mole displacement is sinusoidal, it is going up, then again going coming down and going up. So, one cycle, let us, I have shown here one cycle, just consider the blue sine curve, yeah, this is going up like this, going down and finally, completing the cycle. This, this is the, you know, midpoint, this is the midpoint of the movement of the mold. So, what is happening? Mold is going up, down, again going up and down. So, I am showing here one cycle. Now, since mold displacement is sinusoidal, so mold velocity also will be sinusoidal. What is velocity? It is the differential of mold movement, mold displacement. So, naturally since it is sinusoidal, there is a phase lag. So, if the blue line indicates the mold displacement, this black line indicates mold velocity. So, there is a phase angle of 90 degree. This is what is important to understand and keep in mind because during subsequent you know all my discussion, please remember it is sinusoidal movement M D whatever I am showing of the mold going up and down in a sinusoidal fashion and the differential of it indicates velocity. So, V m is the mole velocity, it is also sinusoidal, but having a phase lag of 90 degree with the mole displacement, that is the difference. Now, this red one, what is this red line? This red line is the V c, V c is the strand velocity, which is nothing but casting velocity. <coughs> you are pulling the solid shell with the help of dummy bar towards down that means, below the mold you are pulling it. So, the this helps 
in imparting a certain velocity to the strand or the solid shell. So, this is called casting velocity, this is equivalent to you also call it casting velocity. So, this is let us assume this is fixed, this is linear, this is not sinusoidal, mold is moving in a sinusoidal fashion, but the strand velocity casting velocity is linear and always it is down, mold is going up going down, mold displacement is going up and down. So, velocity is also going upwards and coming downwards, but the mold that is the mold velocity, but the casting velocity is always linear and downwards. So, now let us come to a situation. So, this black sine curve is basically the mold velocity and this red line horizontal line below the you know neutral line or the horizontal line is basically the mold velocity. So, please concentrate in this area what is happening. In this area of the cycle mold cycle the mold velocity which is here is higher than the casting velocity or the strand velocity. Is it clear in understanding? In the whole cycle this was the cycle in the mold velocity, this is the whole cycle I have shown here one cycle. So, within this cycle in certain time fraction what is happening? The mold velocity is more because it is here in this area it is going down and the mold velocity is more than the casting velocity, casting velocity is this red line. So, is it clear? Mold velocity is more than the casting velocity. So, this portion of the cycle, this fraction of the cycle time is known as negative strip time as if the solid shell is getting stripped. So, that is why it is called negative strip time. So, the whole cycle time is say from here to there, out of that one portion of it where the mold velocity is more than the casting velocity or the strand velocity, that is that particular time is known as negative strip time and that particular ratio of time is known as negative strip ratio in the whole cycle. So, I think it is clear strand velocity in negative strip time this is this this is the time period the, of the negative strip time the whole cycle is this starting from here to say here one cycle and part of this cycle you have negative strip time. What, what is going to happen in the other part? We call it positive strip time. So, there the mold velocity is relatively less compared to the strand velocity. Sometimes it is going up also. So, naturally it is much different from the strand velocity. Well, strand velocity is always coming down, mold velocity is sometimes going up and going down. So, when the mold velocity in the downward journey when it is more than the strand velocity that particular time is called negative strip time this is the time. So, it is T n. So, T n is called negative strip time for mold velocity V m when it is greater than V c that is the casting velocity. So, this is one important concept please try to remember this and from this we will come to different understanding of how does it control the depth of oscillation mark on the surface on the cast product. So, the whole cycle time is a combination of negative strip time plus positive strip time I have explained this is the whole cycle time so from here to here. So, only one portion is less than 50 percent you can always see it has to be less than 50 percent because 50 percent time mold is moving up and 50 percent time is mold is moving down out of that 50 percent when the mold is moving down only a fraction of it is when it is more than the strand velocity. So, I am talking of only that fraction which is known as negative strip time of the cycle where the mold velocity moving downwards and more than the casting velocity or the strand velocity. So, 
cycle time whole cycle time is negative strip time by positive strip time that is what is important. Now what is I am showing here one you know mole cycle just one mole cycle there are several cycles per minute. So what is frequency? Frequency is normally denoted as f small f. So it is basically expressed as cycles per minute. So it is in one minute there may be 50 cycles, there may be 60 cycles, there may be 100 cycles, there may be even more maybe 150 cycles per minute. So that is called the mole frequency number 1 and number 2 there is another you know factor which is associated with mole oscillation that is called stroke. So what is mole stroke? It is basically how much it is moving up and down. So that is normally known expressed as S mole stroke and, and normally measured in millimeter. It may be 4 millimeter, it may be 6 millimeter, it may be 8 millimeter, it may be 10 millimeter in that range. So the mole frequency as I have told you it may be from 50 to say 150 or 200 cycles per minute and stroke can be 4 millimeter, 6 millimeter, 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter like that. So these two factors one is mole frequency expressed as f cycles per minute and there is the mole stroke capital S expressed in millimeter. These two, these two factors of mole oscillation are very important because everything will depend on these two factors and of course on the you know, casting speed Vc or the strands velocity. So, so the velocity of Vm of the mold will depend on these factors mold stroke and mold frequency and Vc of course is independent of the mold frequency or the mold oscillation. So it has a certain it depends on how, how you are how the casting is taking place how we are pulling the you know um, dummy bar and what is the casting speed things like that. So if you have understood this let us now go to the next figure. Here again I have tried to explain what is happening. So let us look at it this is the at the near the meniscus level what is happening. This yellow portion I have mentioned is basically molten steel. This dark constituent is basically the solid shell molten steel is getting solidified. This white area is basically molten slag this blue portion or the blue constituent is basically the solid slag. So you have basically four constituents as you are moving from the mold surface mold surface is here as you are going inside first you have solid shell then you have no sorry first you have solid slag then you have molten slag then you have solid shell and of course then you have molten steel. So, so the now the temperature or the solidification temperature rather of the slag is much less than the molten slag you know slag is having lower melting point that is why first you have towards the mold because this is the coldest portion mold surface is the coldest and the molten steel is the hottest. So you have a temperature gradient from high to low as you are going from molten steel towards the mold. So molten steel is having the highest temperature then you have the solid shell relatively low temperature compared to molten steel then you have molten slag again sl lower temperature compared to the so solid shell and of course finally you have solid slag which is having the lowest temperature. So there is a temperature gradient as you are moving from the high temperature to low temperature towards the mold surface. Now let us see what is happening again I have shown one cycle this blue dotted line is the mold displacement black line is the velocity of the mold. Now just see there is a lag of 90 degree phase difference. So that means when the displacement is 0 here in the cycle the velocity of the mold is highest in the upper direction here. Again when the mold displacement is maximum that means at the top what, what is going to happen to the mold velocity it is 0 here 
So, it is changing over from top to bottom. So, it is 0 here. Then again when the mold is at the neutral point that means the displacement is 0 then what is happening? You have the maximum mold velocity going towards the bottom um, uh, below the mold and look at this you know green line this is Vc as I had explained earlier. So, Vc means casting speed or the strand speed. So, what is that negative strip time? This area, this grey area where mold velocity just look at in this area the mold velocity towards the while it is going down it is more than the casting velocity which is of course linear fixed in that cycle period. So, this is basically the negative strip time that is what is important to understand is it ok. So, what I am trying to tell you is that there is a phase lag between the mole displacement and the mole velocity. So, whenever the mole velocity is highest here or maybe here you find that the mole displacement is 0 it is at the neutral point and vice versa when the mole velocity is maximum it is here or there mole displacement is 0 and when the mole velocity is 0 say this point this point this point. So, what is happening the mole displacement is maximum here also you find it is maximum here also it is fine you find it is maximum. So, whether it is going up or down this phase lag is always there between the displacement and the velocity. I think you have understood this. So, again I am mentioning here mole oscillation V m is the mole velocity which is sinusoidal V c is the casting velocity. So, T n is the negative strip time that portion that time fraction of the cycle time where the mole velocity is greater than the casting velocity. You see casting velocity is here that green and the mole velocity is black here. So, this portion of the cycle time is called negative strip time where mole velocity is more than the casting velocity ok. Now, let us see what is happening now, some people they have actually tried to do mathematical modeling of how with sequence or with rather mold oscillation how does it influence the slab surface contour that means how does it influence the depth of the mold oscillation and also how does it affect the heat transfer inside the mold. So, let us look at it. So, this is basically different cycles of top one it is basically the different cycles has been shown the first cycle second cycle. So, what is happening this is the mold velocity has been shown sinusoidal and as I have told you T n was a negative strip time basically is that portion of the cycle time the whole cycles time is starts from here to here. So, out of that when the mold is moving down a part of it you know a part of that dip, uh, dip, uh, movement it is more than the velocity velocity is here that blue line here uh, more this cast velocity or the strand velocity. So, when the mold velocity is more then the cast velocity this is called the negative strip time. So, what is going to happen with the negative strip time look at what is happening this is just the first cycle. So, the oscillation mark is forming and when this is the depth of the oscillation mark. So, when the negative strip time is starting it is somewhere something here and when you are reaching that means during the no, negative strip time when the negative strip time it is getting completed the maximum depth you will find here the first cycle. Again during the positive strip time it is going up that is the depth is coming down and then again in the next cycle of negative strip time it is increasing. Again in the positive strip time it increases that the surface level is increasing that means the depth is decreasing here the depth is maximum here the depth is maximum 
here the depth is maximum. So, at the end of the negative strip time this is what is important this mold oscillation marks are getting generated during negative strip time that is first you have to remember and it is increasing in depth and maximum at the end of the negative strip time. In the positive strip time the depth is becoming less. So, what is happening is that is why it is called negative strip time. During negative strip time please remember oscillation mark is getting generated. So, oscillation mark generation happens during negative strip time and is maximum at the end of the negative strip time. After that when you are going towards positive strip time slowly the depth of the oscillation marks will decrease. So, there is a movement of the again sort of depth of the oscillation marks towards the as the cycle of oscillation continues. But what is important to remember is that the final oscillation mark depth stabilizes after certain time after certain cycles and this is as I have told you getting generated during negative strip time. So, more is the negative strip time, larger is the negative strip time, more is the possibility of this depth because these oscillation marks are getting generated in negative strip time area locations and logically more is the negative strip time out of the whole cycle time, more is the possibility of the depth of the cycles, uh, depth of the marks oscillation marks. So, this is one important and information what you get from this figure and please remember therefore, that the oscillation mark depth is getting generated during negative strip time and more is the negative strip time therefore, more is the possibility of this depth, higher is the depth, more is negative strip time, higher is the depth. It is quite logical because it is getting generated in the negative strip time time only that portion of the cycle time. So, if T n is high T p will be relatively less and therefore, the healing time is less and that formation of the you know mm -hmm. marks will be more will be more deep and the healing is less here that means, the it is not getting enough time for healing. So, more is T n larger is the T n more is the depth on negatives and more more and more is the negative strip time more deep will be the oscillation mark. So, this is what is important. This one shows that how the heat flux is also changing. You just see that there is a average heat flux in the mold of course, it is somewhere around here is they have calculated they have found it is around say 3.35 or so, but with the motion with the oscillation motion as the you know the mold is going up and down the heat flux is also varying, it is not constant though there is an average value, but it changes. And what is important here to under, uh, see is that it is minimum, where it is minimum? Minimum here, when you know the uh, mold velocity is 0, it is minimum here and where it is maximum? it is maximum where it is here that means, when yeah when the mold velocity is again increasing then only it is increasing. So, like the oscillation mold oscillation there is a in the negative strip time as I have told you the depth increases. So, more is the this yellow portion that means, more bigger is the or larger is the negative strip time more will be the depth. So, deeper will be the oscillation marks. So, this is what is important to remember. So, now let us see how oscillation marks are forming this picture will make it more clear a different cycle position of the mold oscillation it has been shown. So, what is happening just look at it here you can see the oscillation. 
this one is the mole velocity, this one is the mole displacement. So, there is a phase lag of 90 degree as I have told you. So, now let us look at a position somewhere here. So, what is that position? That means, it is when the velocity of the mold is this is V m velocity of the mold is say it is just completed the upper one that means, positive strip time it is just coming to an end and the mold uh, displacement is maximum on the top. So, as you are then here what is happening the movement of the this is the liquid slag this is molten um, steel this is the liquid slag this is solid slag. So, you look at the movement of the because of the mold displacement the slag as if it is going towards the there is a movement away from the shell. So, now come at a position at this position what is this location? Now, you need know what is this location? The V m is maximum and bottom here at the uh, towards the bottom that means, this is the area of negative strip time. So, what is happening here? The slag molten slag it is putting pressure at this meniscus for the formation of the and the deformation of the shell. So, the shell generation or rather the mark oscillation mark generation shell is getting generated of course, here, but it is getting sort of deformed because of this pressure of the liquid slag. So, this mark oscillation mark is getting generated in the area of the negative strip time it is very very clear here. You see this we are now somewhere here that means, we are in the negative strip time because the mole velocity is maximum towards the down. So, here at this position the pressure in the liquid slag is creating the mark oscillation mark. So, therefore, oscillation mark gets created during negative strip time number 1 this is very important to remember and then let us come to another situation of the cycle. Now, where are we? We are somewhere here that means, the mole velocity is now going towards the positive strip time this velocity is increasing here increasing towards the top that is the positive strip time. So, what is happening here? You see the direction of the you know uh, liquid slag it, it has started going towards the mold. Here it was giving a pressure on the solid shell. So, here the direction is almost parallel to the shell and as you move further in you know positive strip time area it goes the direction here it is towards the mold. So, that is what is happening. So, whatever you see here the depth of the oscillation mark was created somehow there is a, this is called the healing time there is a possibility of some healing here some healing here and finally, when it is complete then in the negative strip time another oscillation mark will be generated and then a bit of healing also will be poss possible in the positive strip time. So, what is important here is to understand that look at here I am showing a midway through the negative strip time you know the maximum pressure on the solid shell. So, it is getting generated the depth is more the marks are getting generated in the negative strip time area and finally, these are healing those depths part of it is getting held up when you are going to the positive strip time area time zone. So, in the negative strip, uh, strip time zone marks are getting generated. So, more is the negative strip time more is the possibility of 
creating larger depth more deep oscillation marks because you are getting more time for the generation of the marks and if the positive if the negative strip time mode means positive strip time proportionately will come down. So, healing time is coming down. So, the possibility of the depths getting healed up subsequently in the cycle is also relatively less. So, more is the negative strip time deeper will be the mark depth. I think now you understand what I have been harping on. So, negative strip time basically creates oscillation marks, positive strip time tries to heal the mark oscillation marks. So, during the whole cycle you know in during the negative strip time oscillation marks are getting created and during the positive strip time it is partly getting healed up. So, more is the negative strip time more is the possibility of deeper oscillation marks. Therefore, if you want to avoid deep oscillation marks, oscillation marks will be there you cannot avoid it. Since oscillation of the mold is there is essential for continuous casting it is always there. So, oscillation marks will be there, but oscillation mark depth we can control. We cannot control oscillation marks, oscillation marks will be there you please try to remember, but we can definitely control oscillation mark depth. So, how we can control? If we can control negative strip time in the cycle whole cycle there is negative strip time there is positive strip time combination of these two will give the cycle time. So, if the negative strip time is less positive strip time is relatively more then only we have less deep oscillation marks. So, which is good for the quality of the cast product. So, now let us see what is happening here. So, again the same thing has been shown here this is the shell ok. So, and here you find oscillation mark here you find oscillation marks there different oscillation marks first here. So, oscillation mark where it is getting generated in this blue blue zone what is this blue zone negative strip time what is negative strip time when the this blue one this blue negative or the towards the downward you know mold velocity is more than this blue line here is the mold velocity ok. V c this blue line here I have shown V c V c. So, when V mold is more than the V c that is the negative strip time area zone. So, in this negative strip zone oscillation mark is forming you see one oscillation mark another oscillation mark different cycles another oscillation mark. So, oscillation mark and you see what is the regularity what is the you know gap between the two oscillation marks you can find out that is also possible to measure because each oscillation is creating oscillation mark. So, the gap or the interval between the two oscillation marks is basically related to the oscillation time cycle time of mold oscillation. So, therefore, these are oscillation marks are at certain regular intervals if they are at regular intervals that means the mold cycle is regular there is no irregularity in mold movement in mold oscillation, but if there is a you know non uniform gap between the oscillation marks then that is a defect because what is happening oscillation is not regular mold oscillation it is irregular and that is creating irregular oscillation mark. So, now you understand oscillation mark is getting created in the negative strip zone there is a possibility of it is getting healed up a bit in the positive strip zone. So, larger is the negative strip zone you know more is this negative strip time deep will be the oscillation marks. So, here I have mentioned T n is negative strip time I have told you cycle, uh, during the cycle time where V m mold velocity is less than the casting velocity that is what is negative strip time. 
So, deep oscillation mark is related to high negative strip time. First oscillation mark is generated during negative strip time that is first thing I have told you again and again I am repeating. It is getting generated in negative strip time only it is associated with negative strip time and more is this T n larger is the negative strip time deeper will be the oscillation marks. So, our aim is to control this negative strip time. If you can control negative strip time depth of the oscillation marks will be less and if the oscillations are regular oscillation marks will be also regular. You can actually calculate for a normal regular mold oscillation what will be the gap interval between the oscillation marks. It is it is everything is can be calculated here from here okay? from the mold oscillation it is possible. Okay. So, now let us see again people have done theoretical measurements as well as you know actually they have measured it. So, what is the final outcome? So, this is negative strip time this is in second say 0 0.1 to 0 0.4 it is varying. How it can vary? I will uh, show it in the next uh, you know slide, but let us assume that with negative strip time it is varying from say 0 0.1 to 0 0.4. So, what is this blue line? It is the depth of oscillation mark d o m say it is varying from say about 50 micron to say about maybe 250 micron. So, there is an appreciable difference in the depth with negative strip time that is what has been quantitatively quantitatively shown earlier it was qualitatively known that oscillation mark is getting generated during negative strip time I have shown you in different figures. So, now people have actually measured through modeling and also through you know actual measurement they have validated. So, what has been found with increase in negative strip time the depth of oscillation mark increases is a substantial increase around 50 micron to say 250 micron ok. It is a quite a big increase in depth. So, we have to avoid high oscillation high negative strip time rather so that depth of oscillation marks is controlled within say 100 micron or so maybe 150 micron or so it does not increase too much you just see red line what is this I had shown you in the earlier you know this red line is basically the how the q peak that means the heat transfer within the mold how it is changing I have told you there is an average and then there is a variation. So, how the average is there and there is a variation there is a sinusoidal variation. So, how it is changing it is shown here. Now, let us go to this picture and see how this peak is changing. So, with negative strip time fortunately the q peak is coming down a bit from very high to slightly lower figure. So, while the depth of oscillation mark is increasing the q peak however, is coming down. So, this is one important observation and now let us come here. So, here we have shown how negative strip time we now know that negative stream type has to be controlled has to be controlled within lower limits then only we can get shallow oscillation marks. So, what is the situation here let us see how the oscillation mark depth is getting influenced. So, oscillation marks form and become more deep during negative strip time this I have explained oscillation marks are forming during negative strip time. So, more is the negative strip time higher will be the depth this is important. Now, increase in T n results in deep oscillation mark this also I have shown. Now, let us see quantitatively what is T n how does it depend on I have told you T n depends on mold oscillation parameters as well as the casting velocity. So, how does it depend it is 60 divided by pi into f this is frequency then arc cos 
you know this basically cos inverse V c, V c is the casting speed. So, casting speed is important and this is again divided by pi then you know, and stroke and then frequency. V c is casting speed, A c is oscillation stroke I have mentioned earlier expressed in millimeter, F is the frequency of oscillation which is cycles per minute. So, if you want low oscillator now from here you can deduct if you want low T n, low T n means low negative strip time. So, how is it possible? This will be low when V c is and F are high. So, either the casting speed is relatively high or the mold frequency is relatively high then only we can get low T n or our stroke should be relatively small. So, V c you know there is a limit where we how to what extent we can increase the casting speed because you know casting speed there is a limit it, if you go to very high casting speed the shell thickness will be average shell thickness will be less and there is a possibility of breakout formation. So, within that limit we have to operate at relatively higher casting speed then only we get a relatively shallow oscillation marks number 1. Number 2 f should be high that means, the oscillation frequency should be high. So, I had told you oscillation frequency can be 50, can be 100, can be 150. So, higher the oscillation frequency that means, higher the cycles per minute better it is. Negative strip time will be less and consequently the depth of the marks will be less. Another parameter is the stroke I have told you, the stroke here should be small. So, frequency should be high, but stroke should be small say about 4 millimeter, 5 millimeter, it should not go to 10 millimeter or 12 millimeter. So, S stroke should be small, frequency should be high, which will give us shallow oscillation marks. So, here I have mentioned that negative strip time, how with increase in negative strip time oscillation mark depth is increasing. I have mentioned here. So, our aim is to control negative strip time within lower value say 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 seconds or so. It should not be higher than that. If we can control that our depth of oscillation marks will also be say less than 100 micro micron or so depth I am talking of the depth. Okay. So, and I have shown you here how we can get lower T n. Lower T n is possible when frequency is high, but the stroke is small. So, with these two parameters that means high frequency and small stroke and within limitations if we go for slightly higher casting speed our depth of oscillation will be relatively small and which is a normal feature of cast pro, you know cast product any cast product there will be the oscillation marks I am again and again telling since there is oscillation there will be oscillation marks. But I have mentioned oscillation marks are created in during negative strip time. So, if the negative strip time is controlled within lower value depth of the oscillation marks will be relatively shallow that means relatively less. How we do that? Within the limitation of casting we have our speed should be slightly higher and as far as the mold oscillation is concerned frequency of the mold f should be high. Maybe we have to go to 100 cycles per second cycles per minute or maybe 150 cycles per minute or 200 cycles per minute yeah, that is called high frequency and you know the stroke that means the displacement the movement of the uh, this mold cycle the stroke displacement should not be very high it should be low maybe 4 millimeter 5 millimeter. So, lower stroke and high frequency and whatever maximum casting speed is possible within the limitation of having a safe casting. So, V c high V c high casting speed high frequency mold frequency and low mole stroke 
will give us relatively shallow oscillation marks and which is desirable. We do not want very deep oscillation marks, we want only shallow oscillation marks. Again I am repeating oscillation marks will be there because mold oscillation is there, oscillation marks will be there. So, during negative strip time oscillation marks are getting generated, more is the negative strip time deeper with the oscillation marks. So, our aim is to control negative strip time within lower limits. How we can control? We can control it by having higher frequency of mold oscillation, but lower stroke value. So, high f, low s and then within the limitations relatively higher casting speed. So, these are the issues through which we understand that by controlling negative strip time, by controlling mold frequency, low frequency or rather high frequency and high casting speed, but low stroke length, we get shallow oscillation marks which are relatively good, which do not constitute as a defect. Wherever we get deep oscillation marks, there is a problem. There is a problem during in under those deep oscillation marks, there may be cracks, there may be entrapment of you know slag which will create problem during subsequent hot rolling, they will be getting exposed. So, this is a very important quality issue, depth of oscillation mark. We have to be careful about controlling the negative strip time and this way we control the depth of the oscillation marks. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. Thank you.